Hi again everyone. So this week we're doing part two of Who's Yama Mama, uh, which is starting to learn to improvise to the song. So the first thing we need to know is how to play the A major scale. Because Fuji Yama Mama is in the key of A major and when you're improvising you mostly, especially when you're starting to improvise, you will stick to the notes within that scale. When you start getting more advanced, you can start straying outside. And we're going to show you, I'm going to show you this little one way of just, just slightly straying outside um, to add a little bit of interest, but mostly we're going to stick within the scale. So learn this scale, learn what notes or options are in it, and then you can start building up your toolbox to improvise. Now I know that for most of you scales are dull and boring, but they really are super useful when it comes to learning songs and improvising. If I know my A major scale, I know what notes are available to me to create my own bass line. I can then start putting my own personality into this song. So we're gonna look at this A major scale and we're gonna look at where the notes are just on these first four strings within this hand position here, okay? Um, and that'll help give you a sort of beginners to intermediate level improvisers toolbox, as it were, for this particular song. So your basic A major scale starts on your open A here. So you play your open A. Then the next note is a B, which is not the first fret, but the hand shifted down one. The reason we're going to shift the hand down one is because that means the next note is under your hand and you don't have to shift. So we're going to stay here. So we're going to open. The B is your first finger here. And then the next note is the C sharp, which is all fingers down here. Then you have your open D, just there. First finger on the E, all fingers down on the F sharp. And then we have to shift back up on that last string for your G sharp and then your A. Okay? And we can think about those notes in numbers as well, number terms. So note number one, note number two, three. is because you'll hear terms like play the triad and the triad is the first the third and the fifth note of the scale so when we're in a major we know what if we know what the note numbers are we know that the first note is a number one the third note is a c sharp and the fifth note is an e okay so we've got one two three four five one three and five and that is the triad in the a major scale so once you've got the hang of the a major scale um, you can also look at where some of the other notes are. So obviously we've got bottom E, which is in E major, F sharp, G sharp, and A. Okay, that's in the fret first. Okay, and then we've also got the B, and you've got C sharp, okay? So there are your note choices, your basic note choices within this. So the second thing we need to look at is the chord pattern. Um, if you're a patron, you can go to the downloads and grab the PDF of the chord chart. Um, if not, it is a standard 12 bar blues. So you've got your 1, 4, 1, 5, 1 kind of style, which is slight variation. So instead of a 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, it's a 1, 4, 1, 5, 4, 1. So instead of two bars of the 5 chord, you've got one bar of the 5 chord and one bar of the 4 chord. If you're not following the number system, um, there is a video, tutorial video on the number system, so you can go and see what I'm going on about with numbers. Um, it really does help to understand chords in numbers. Um, I'll give you a quick overview. So, with this being a 12 bar blues, chord number one in A major is A. Okay, chord number four is D. And then you're back to one. Okay, then chord number five is E chord number four again, D, and then back to the one. So you've got chord, four bars of chord one, two bars of four, two bars of one, one bar of chord five, one bar of chord four, and four bars of chord one, two bars of chord one, sorry, to finish. So looking at the actual song, we're going to start with the basics of what the song does, because if you stray too far outside what that basics, you're kind of going to stray too far outside the concept of the song. So with your first four bars of A, you want to kind of stick to what we did in the beginner's tutorial, um, part one of Fujiyama Mama. So we've got E, A with the stops. And then the four A's. Okay, 
Okay, so you can play with it a little. You could maybe go up the octave. So you've got your E and A up there. And then with those four A's, you could play with your slap rhythm. Yeah, something like that. Just chucking a double, whatever, you know, play around with it. You could um, A, E, A, E. You could do something, but you want to stick to kind of basic on that one because it's bringing the um, main part of the tune in. You don't want to go too far outside it. Then you get to the real opportunities for improvising. So we've got two bars of D. So in the beginners, we thought just the basic triangle. So you're using that D chord, don't forget you're in the, you're still in A major, so you're still using the notes that are in A major, you're just on the fourth chord of A major, and it's got the notes called D major chord because the notes, the one, three and five of that chord, when you're in the key of A major, still make that D major triad, okay? So when you're improvising, you can use um, any of the notes from that A major scale, so you'd have a D, E, F sharp, you've got that G sharp, a, B, and C sharp. But what you can do to make it a little bit interesting is you can add that blues note, which is a flat and seventh. So you'll probably recognise the sound of this progression. Okay, so that C there isn't actually in the key of A major, but it's a really nice bit of colour. So this is the one note you can play that's outside, um, just to add that little bit of colour. We're not going to go any further into outside notes, we're just going to use that flat and seventh and all the different chords because um, it's just a nice option when you're starting to improvise. So you can literally play any of the chords, uh, sorry, any of the notes in any order. The things to stick to when you're beginning to improvise is pretty much always, unless you're feeling super brave and you know it's going to work, um, always stick to note number one when you change chord at the beginning of a chord. So if I've just come from the A, straight to that D for that very first note of that chord just to be like we're here we change chord we're in a D because as a bass player your job is to be the foundation for what the singer the guitarist or the sax player or whatever solo instrument you've got you're the foundation for them to play on top of so you don't want to be playing something that's a little bit too crazy because it will have no structure so as a bass player you need to provide some structure when you're improvising so we can start on that D, but then you're kind of a little bit more free to explore. The strongest notes you're looking at when you're improvising is the first note of a chord, the third note of a chord, and the fifth note of a chord. So they're ones to kind of home around, which is why the triad works so well. Yeah. But you can do you could do your blues. Yeah, or you could just do a little run. Option to play the G natural. Uh, that is a flat and seventh, but it's the flat and seventh of the A. Because we're in the key of A, it still works. It's a little bit more out there, but again, you can play that, but again, choose where you play it. You don't want to be playing these outside notes on any of your strongest points. So, like, you don't really want to be playing it going into the next chord, so the note leading into the next chord. You don't want to play it on the first note of the bar. You kind of want to give some strong notes on those. So you've got two bars of D, that's essentially if you're playing one to the bar, that's eight notes. And don't forget you can play with rhythm, so you can be like, you know, play a little bit of a dotted rhythm, a little bit of fun, you know, um, that's if you're playing pizzicato, it's a little bit harder when you're playing slap style, but you know, you can still play around. Your slap technique's really good, you can sort of add some, you know, so you can add some of those in there, but you've got to have really really hot slap technique to uh, fit those in. Um, if not, feel free to play pizzicato, you know? It's uh, it's totally an option. So then we've gone back to the two bars of A. So you've just finished, and you're doing something. So I finished on, a, I finished on an A that time. So um, the A is the next chord. So I could actually play that A again. So I could jump down an octave. Or if I finished on a D, I could jump up to that A. You know, depends where you finished. But you want to probably come into an A to be safe. The second strongest note would be the E because that's the fifth. So your strongest is your first. 
second strongest is your fifth, your third strongest would be your third. So depending on how brave you feel, you could try and throw that fifth in there. You might get a glare from your guitarist if he's doing something really out there. But you know, if you use your ears, you can probably tell if it's safe to try something a bit different. And you know, if you're in a jam situation, go mad. It's it's that's where you learn, you know. Um depending on who you're jamming with, if you're with some really advanced musicians, they might be a little bit like, what's he doing? Um, but you know, just say, look, I'm learning, I'm trying out some new things. Um, you know, if it's a performance jam, maybe take a few less risks. But if you're just in a room with a load of your mates doing some, you know, playing along some tunes, have a laugh. You know, do see what comes out, see what happens. That's how you learn, you know, by messing it up and then go, oh, that didn't work. Um, but then you might find something really cool. That you're like, yeah, that did work. So we've done our uh, four bars of A, two bars of D, two bars of A. So then now we've got a bar of E. So um, you can, you know, start, start on your E. Again, play with rhythm, let's play with different so end on your B if you want, you know. Anything like that. Um it's gonna end on the B if you want. It sounds quite cool. Um, and then again you've got four notes in your D chord. So this is quite a nice opportunity when you're improvising, if you come up with a little pattern starting from your E, maybe you do this, then you could repeat that pattern on your D. So I did one, five, five, one, which is E, B, B, E, and then I do one, five, five, one in the D chord, so D, A, A, D, okay? All right, can find another one. And then, you know, that's a nice little improvisation technique. You can repeat the same pattern when you change the chord, it can sound really cool. So then you've got your last two bars of the piece, which is, ends on your A chord, so um, you can just play your A, but don't forget the little rhythmic. The um, little rhythm, the little uh, sort of dotted rhythm there you get, you want to end on your A, but you can try and play with different things. You might go up to the B, back down to the E, or you might actually do an F. You want to be careful with the F, depending on what your guitarist is doing, because um, again, that's a slightly outside note. So those are your options. Um, don't forget you've got the flat and seventh on everything. So that's a really nice one. So your flat and seventh when you're playing the A chord is your G. That's your standard blues thing. But that G is the flat and seventh. It's quite a nice addition. So when you're playing your D, that's your uh, C is there. And then on your E chord, you've got that D. Okay. So they're not those notes aren't technically in that scale or in that chord, but they're a really nice little, little bit of colour, a little bit of interest that you can throw in there. But again, be careful where you play. You don't want to ever play those on the first beat of a bar, but you know, just experiment. Find your personality, find what you like to play with. So there you have it, a little introduction to how to improvise around Fujiyama Mama. If you've liked the video and you like the channel, please do subscribe or give me a big thumbs up. It's just a little click below. Um, and if you're really enjoying the videos and you want to become a part of the um, community for the teaching, the lessons, and also for chats of that bamboozle, things like that, um, you can become a patron. So you go to patreon.com slash bamboozlehq. It starts at just £3 a month. So from the £3, you get the access to the private community um, and also all the downloads that I put up for all of the videos, so including the charts and things like for Fuji and my mama. Um, and there's different tiers that you can subscribe to. So the prices get a little higher, but the benefits get a lot bigger. Um, I'm going to do monthly workshops where uh, we all join together on Zoom and we interact and talk through certain techniques and certain things. Um, and the higher you go, you can have one-to-one -one Zoom lessons and uh, even priority requests for videos. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it this week and you've learned stuff. Don't forget, comment if they've got anything you want to say about the video and I'll get back to you. And uh, I'll see you again next time.